St. Patrick's Athletic have secured European football for next season and at least a third place finish thanks to a 1 0 victory over Sligo Rovers at a rain drenched Richmond Park this evening. The win moves the Saints into second on 62 points, three clear of Derry City in third, and just three points off league leader Shamrock Rovers, who have a game in hand on their Dublin rivals. Sligo have a comfortable lead and a superior goal difference over Cork City, even after this defeat in Inchicore, but are yet to be mathematically guaranteed of their st uh, status in the top flight next season. With both sides having the ability to effectively achieve their respective goals, the opening exchanges at a saturated Richmond Park were unsurprisingly frantic and full of chances. Keane Levy looked bright from the off, providing some dangerous deliveries from set plays, which created moments of panic in the Sligo penalty area. The 21-year-old also looked dangerous from distance, as his strike inside the opening 10 minutes flew just wide of Richard Brush's goal. Sligo had opportunities of their own uh, in the early stages, thanks to Fabrice Hartman's tidy footwork and a looping header from Caelan Barlow, but Dean Linus was up to the challenge on both occasions, keeping the score level. The best chance of the game for the away side came from the corner after Barlow's header, and Gary Buckley rose to meet the ball and head powerfully towards goal, only for the header, which looked like a certain goal, to be blocked by his skipper, David Colley. Swift breakaways from Conor Carty and Jason McClellan created clear chances to break the deadlock, but Brush used his feet well on both occasions to deny the St. Pat's duo. Minutes after McClellan looked, McClellan looked like he uh, odds on to break the deadlock, the provider of the chance and the most influential player on the night, Keane Levy, did just that. Jamie Lennon collected the ball out wide and fed Levy, who was unmarked in the middle of the Sligo half. Levy got the ball out of his feet and struck a rasping effort, which flew past Brush, who could only watch the ball sail into the top corner. There may have been a slight deflection on the ball, which caused the ball to rise into the top, into the cor top corner, but nevertheless, the young midfielder's sensational strike was worthy of opening the scoring. The second half was much scrappier than the opening 45 minutes, with St. Pat's dominating the ball and Sligo staying, res staying resolute. Most of the half was played in the Sligo half, uh, but even with their domination of the ball, St. Pat's failed to grab a second goal and make the closing stages a more, more comfortable task. Barlow had the opportunity to salvage draw as the clock ticked towards the 80th minute, but his half chance inside the box was saved yet again by Linus. Sligo seemed energised by this opportunity and fought back well in the final few minutes of the game, but were unable to put a cohesive attack together to cause the Saints rearguard any significant problems. Final score at Richmond Park. St. Patrick's Athletic 1, Sligo Rovers 0. No.